This is Scoreboard. It's that show that takes you into the world of sports, behind the world of sports, to let you know what's going on on the field and, of course, off the field as well. And as usual, we've lined up a couple of events that we would like you to know about. And uh, we would like to fill you in on what is going on in the world of sports. Let's start with the highlights of what we'll be talking about today. Now, the headlines is that the Safari Rally is here. You know about it. A long time back, your dad will tell you, your uncle will tell you as well. It used to be in April when the rains would be in April and they would religiously come in that month and then the Safari Rally would be on. It was the muddiest affair. The, the cars came out in different shapes and sizes, very muddy, and that was the fun of it all to know who has won it. Now, this time around, hybrid cars and then super stages that have been created and these cars are both electrical and mechanical and all those cars are currently in Naivasha and we'll tell you what they're doing there now and who is the overnight leader as well and who is the kenyan who is leading at the moment as we get to that story on the rally and also another story that we have for you is that shabana the team that likes to call itself Tore Bobe, that's, that's their slogan, eh? Tuko Sisiniwale, Tore Bobe, are back into the Premier League. Now, together with Moranga Seals as well, they seem to have sealed their places there. Now, we're looking at who's going to be relegated as well. We know them, but we'll tell you about them as we come to that story as well. Plus, the fact that the Kenyan Premier League is now coming to the end. It's neck and neck. Gormahia lost. Tasca did not win. They drew. Now, that means it's a difference in points. It's a mathematics that we have to do. What if Tasca loses and Gormaya wins? What if Gormaya loses and Tasca wins? What if they draw? What if one draws? All those mathematics we'll be doing for you in just one moment. We are taking also a look at what's happening in the Africa Cup of Nations qualifiers. Nigeria, Mali, Cap Verde have already gone in there and they did it in style. That's what we are lining up for you. Plus, of course, we always want you to be part of the show today as well. Who are you rooting for? in the world rally championship safari rally who are you rooting for in the world rally championship safari rally i am at bernard underscore sports at kchege underscore sports at wilfred bungay that's where our twitter handles are at we'd like you to get involved in what we're doing today when you get to the show right let's get into it i am bernardo tieno i'll be your host i have got the team here as well ken chege is right here how are you? Fine, Bernard, and how are you? Good, thank you. Very well. Now, you know why I'm looking at you like this, because you haven't paid your baba. Is it because of the finance bill? Um, he's not done any work on you. First and foremost, I told you he's a national supporter. <laughs> he's, he's still there. He's still there. <laughs> so he's still pouting? He's still there. Okay, still all right, there. I understand. But I understand. we'll see him next week. Yeah. All right. What worked for you? Yeah, um, I, I was struggling with what worked for me. I wasn't sure whether to go with golf or to go with football. So what I just quit football. Okay. Um, Senegal beating Brazil. Oh, Four okay. goes to two mm -hmm. in Brazil. Uh -huh. uh, I think you know, you know Brazil. Have Why been, are people getting really surprised at that? Brazil has not has not considered four goals since they were beaten seven one in uh, twenty fourteen. You, you know, that's a Germany. Ge that's a good no. thing about being Brazil. People now start saying you have not considered uh, by, by this number of goals. They were beaten in the World Cup just the other day, weren't they? Yeah, but not by more than uh, that. In no, fact, but they were beaten. In, in fact, the time the last time they were beaten by two goals was against Chile in 2015. Mm. So that's a big thing. But the big thing is not Brazil losing. The big thing is Senegal winning. Okay. I think that's, that's a really... That worked for you. All right, let me move on then to um, uh, Captain Wilfred Bungay. Nice to see you as well. There's been a lot of athletics going on. We started in Paris. We are now in Oslo. We are now having the national uh, championships in Kenya as well, after the police, after all the other championships as well. What well, worked for you this week? Well, uh, actually, uh, Bernard, you know, uh, what works out, I, I don't know, always in this show, you know, you, you, you tend to be reading my mind. Uh, because what worked for me, you know, is something on athletics. Uh, Audrey Wero, uh, who is a Swiss, she broke a world record, you know, that had stood for the last 44 years. Correct, yes. Since yes. 1979, yes. you know, it's a yes. thousand meters. Okay, what happened, Bernard, is here is that um, in the field of athletics, you know, 1,000 meters, one mile, and all those, you know, they are not the Olympic Games um, events. Yes, they and therefore, there are not so many. Yes. And that's why you see some of these world records would be able to stand. But you can imagine, you know, if because I believe whoever broke the world record then was the junior championships, championships what was used to be called, you know, before we had uh, under 20 and all these. And uh, for me, you know, to break a world record, you know, that that's It's a big thing. Absolutely. In fact, we'll be talking about that as well because partly that's what worked for me as well. Faith Kipiegon was rewarded. That's what worked for me. Not, not that she broke the record. We know that. Uh, two records. But she was rewarded. 
five million shillings from the government and a house worth six million shillings. Now, that is what she was given. Of course, other corporates came in as well. We saw her receiving a father two million shillings. We saw her receiving a car for her father, her wish, you know. It's a dream come true for Faith Kipiegon. And, of course, we applauded her even, even here. And that really worked for me. The other thing that didn't work for me is the fact that top marathoners have actually opted out of the Kenya national team. Mm. They did. No, this yes, is what a comment from both saw, of you, yeah. in fact. Yeah, yeah. well, uh, you see, if you look at the reason why, they said they want to go for their own personal races, where, honestly, they earn more money. And I told you, no, we agree with that. this thing is really all about, it's, it's, we agree it's, with that. it's, it's, we it's agree a profession. I, I, I like when you, when, you use that, when you use the word that it didn't work for you. You see, there's an unfortunate thing, Bernard, that happens here. Most athletes would choose to go for the individual races, Berlin and the big ones, mm -hmm. but not knowing that if they run the World Championships and wins, they have a bigger chance, for example, when it comes to prize money. And this is something that we have been talking That's about. That's the truth. That That's what I was thinking need, as well. And that is why we need the top athletes always to be in the team and not pulling out. They have opted to go for the big marathons. There's three of them which are still the rich ones and they're waiting. The other thing that uh, worked for me is that a Kenyan fencer qualified or rather w w won the Africa Championship, the gold medal. We know the story. She was previously saying she's not been given any help, but she wasn't yeah. really aligning with the Kenyan side. But now Alexandria Andolo <laughs> has lined up with the Kenyan side that she's and a, that she's, she's fully won Kenyan. the gold medal in the African <laughs> Championship. Let's move on now. We start on the first story and we start with uh, what's going on we in athletics faith kipiegon you know was awarded by five million kenya shillings from the government now the government has promised to award every world breaker with the same amount of money i'm printing my words deliberately so that you understand that it's a promise by the government that's where we are going now five million shillings for a world record how much motivation and, uh, do you think that can be that is big big motivation bernard and 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 just to correct i think it's five million plus a house that was the promise that was the promise. I'm talking whatever about she money. Was, whatever she was given Five is what million. every athlete that breaks a world record, male or female, is going to get from now on with this administration. Was the house inclusive? I yes, it was, it was. Five million. The house was only. I, I don't know. Well, what here is a uh, <laughs> yes. who's in um, athletics? I'm sure there was a buzz in the athletics well, world. Yeah. A lot of athletes are always saying the government is not helping us. The government does not care about us. Now she was uh, rewarded with five million shillings, but only for the world. Uh, record. We know that there are other athletes who are suffering. Delilah Asiago is, is, is complaining that she's not getting any help from the government. Well, I, I, I can tell you that uh, if, if you remember, you know, this is a discussion we have had uh, on many occasions even here, you know, when we compare ourselves, if you remember the last discussion, we, we were talking about our counterparts in Uganda, you know, which is uh, compared in terms of economy, you know, it's not the same. You know, Kenya is more, much richer and there somebody gets a house in Kambala. And uh, of course, you know, as, as, as an athlete myself, I appreciate the fact that at least there is a reward for the world record. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, Ken is right. Uh, there's, there's six million shillings for the house and then uh, five million cash. It is going to be uh, a motivation, you know, for, for the Kenyan athletes, for them to understand that if I'm going to break a world record, then definitely I'm going to be able to get uh, do you something. Think, do you think now there'll be more motivation for that? That's Abs what I'm asking. Absolutely. You see, but, you know, there is something that I, I, I want to be able to, uh, to understand. Uh, in terms of uh, yeah, uh, um, they, they, it, it's not very clear to you, is it? Yeah, exactly. It's not clear because you know there is something else that we need to understand here, uh, Bernard, and, and especially in Aken. Mm. When we are talking about world record, how about the junior, the juniors that will break world record? No, but it's we, we are going it, to have it, yeah, it was yeah, exactly. every athlete. <laughs> no, no, no. That's why I Ken, specifically said I'm every from, athlete, male or female. I, I am talking from an experienced side yes, because yes. I do understand. You know, most of the time you would find that some records, let's say for a th for, for example a thousand that we are talking about, yes, or uh, one mile. You know, somebody will be like, no, this is not a world record. But of mm. course, you know, it should be rewarded. Every world record should be valid. Right. So let's just say that every world record will be, will be, will be uh, well rewarded. Do you remember somebody like uh, Moses Kiptanui? You remember he, he broke the world record twice, I think in three days. The 3,000 meters flat and the 3,000 meters steeplechase. So we know how difficult it is to have two records within a week or even two weeks or even within a month. And actually, you know, you have brought a very important point because number one, Ken is talking about anyone who breaks a world record will be rewarded with five million. Yes. Now the question is, 
feet are already broken two world two. records. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, because if you break every world record, I believe it should uh, be worth okay. five million. Five million. All right. Well, yeah. but maybe not in the case of faith. Starting <laughs> after faith, maybe, after maybe. Faith, yeah. Starting after the Sometimes second Sometimes we need record. to be very careful about these things. All right. Well, congratulations, um, faith, and really, we are happy for you. We are rooting for you. We we're to have you here with us last week, but you know what happened. Now we're gonna try and get you probably next week to talk to you in person about what's going on. Now the Diamond Leagues is where the records are going. We were in Paris and we saw three world records going. There was a world lead, more so in the 800 meters, by a very young man, Wanyoni, from Kenya. Now, Oslo. What happened in Oslo? Yeah, and on, why is it that these records are falling on in the Diamond League? Or is it because the Diamond League is, is most consistent? consistent? Um, not just consistent, Bernard. But you realize the Diamond League is also a most lucrative. It's the most lucrative of races. And it is you know, literally every other week. Mm. Uh, for example, 5,000 meters. Most guys, they will go only to 3,000 meters. Therefore, you have 2,000 meters to go on your own. And therefore, catching the, the, the time that you are in, yeah. then it becomes yeah. a little bit difficult. Okay. And that's why it is helpful. So this technology is actually helping. You Absolutely. have to leave it, leave it at yeah. that. Absolutely. Okay, yeah. fine. Mm. Uh, just a quick touch on those world leads because it, we've got it, to move on. The world records. Yeah, the world records in Oslo. The, the, the world, world leads in the, Oslo. The world leads in yes, Oslo. So, yes. so in Oslo, uh, the first one was a Kenyan in the uh, 3,000 meters. Beatrice uh, flat. 3,000 meters flat. 3, okay. Not triple, triple uh, flat. And, and in that race, Lillian Kasaito also ran her personal best and she was second to Beatrice. Then we had the women's uh, 400 meters. That was Fembeck Grand from uh, the Netherlands. Uh, 400 meters hurdles and in the men 1500 meters we had Jacob Ingrid Sten and if you remember Jacob had set a world record he did, he did, in the two did. miles a week okay. earlier in Oslo right. and do you know that he in broke Paris. a 26 year old record by David Great. Gomez. that's what I'm saying that's, that's the yeah. new things that are happening so, mm. Ingrid did that and broke that that record and yeah. again this is one of the races that had been dominated previously by Africans Isha exactly. Mel Gerouge was always there and all that yeah. but uh, it, it's Sirazi. changing a little bit I, I, actually Gibbs. when you have put that Bernard you know it has become very interesting and especially uh, for, for, for Jacob you know who is a Norwegian you know he has been improving and I think it is bringing a different picture now in mm, athletics mm, whereby mm. you know Kenyans and Africans has been dominating the Middle East yeah, yeah. but right now you know this guy has really really done very well it's changing it's the it's evolution changing. of athletics as well because yeah. the Africans are coming into the sprints now as well you know and, yeah. and now the marathons <laughs> the Kenyans are taking over again taking but over again. I think there's that cycle of uh, you know production of athletes yeah. let's move on then the World Rally Championship we like to call it the Safari Rally it started in earnest Thursday today with a shakedown stage at Kasarani now there was some very interesting and very exhilarating um, event at Kasarani. But more interesting as well was the fact that um, the President of the Republic of Kenya was given a, a little taste of what, <laughs> of what happens in a rally car. In, 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 and uh, <laughs> he looked a little bit like a navigator. Only this time around, he could not give an instruction. Actually, Bernard, you know, uh, I, I watched... You know, I expected him to say, uh, to metenga hii kona ya kulia sahi. Well, um, <laughs> but, you know... I, I don't think he was really trying to say anything. <laughs> It was a good, it was a good, a good experience, and um, it's nice to see that the government yeah. is supporting the event totally. So uh, there was uh, the flag off at uh, KICC, but there was the shake, shake down stage at Kasarani. But I th actually, you know, what is interesting when you mentioned, uh, especially that uh, you know the president decided to be there. You know, even for me, I said you must be really br very brave, uh, because if you look at the way the guy uh, was driving, you know, he was driving just like it is, it is, it is a race. You know, itself, it's a competition because it was so fast, and I can. Uh, you know, that, that I can only it, say it's, it's that, meant you know, to be fast. It's yeah, meant to be fast. Yeah, mm. and uh, you know you can you can imagine you know the adrenaline that is there. Yes, yeah. with that kind of speed. Well, that, that's what it is. Now th th this this is a, a similar to a gravel kind of race, you know. And then the super special stages have been created deliberately, you know, for the fans as well to be able to see what is going on and all that. The stages. So. As of today, we have been told Estonian Ot Tanak is the overnight leader after the 4.8 kilometer Kasarani sp uh, speed test. And Carl Tundo is the leading Kenyan at the moment. Now we know that uh, they, they will be moving uh, tomorrow again uh, to Naivasha. I mean, that's where it will be starting from. And there are different stages uh, that they will be uh, running in tomorrow. There is the complete list which is long of how they will start tomorrow. But we know um that uh 
They'll be in Kedong, they'll be in, uh, in uh, what do you call it, in, uh, in Naivasha, in, in that, that area, and, and there's the geothermal loop. There's three loops that they will be repeating tomorrow, uh, Friday, in the, as the first event for tomorrow. But this is the seventh event in the World Rally Championship calendar, you, you, the Safari Rally. Yeah, and, and it has the most entries uh, since um, the, 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 the Brazilian race that was in March. Um, and that just goes to show you the interest, the immense interest that this rally shows. It is one of the most grueling, if not the most grueling, of, uh, of rallies because you race under, one thing you must appreciate, you race under extremely natural conditions. Uh, in other countries, they try and make the track this way and that way. But here, you race exactly the way, as it, the way it is. And yeah, yes, uh, you do. Yes, you do. And, okay, and in, in nature, in, in wild nature. nature. Yes, in wild so nature. tomorrow, they will be at Loldia. That's uh, Super Stage 2. That, so Loldia, the first lap. Then uh, Geothermal, Super Stage 3. And then Super Stage 4 will be Kedong. And, and Kedong then they go the back to, uh, to Loldia. And then Geothermal. And then they repeat it with Kedong. Now, I was bringing to your attention the fact that this is the seventh in the rally calendar. There is the Rally of Monte Carlo, which was won by Sebastian. Then uh, uh, Otto Tanak, who's here in the country, uh, won the second one, which is the Rally of Sweden. Third one was uh, Mexico, which was again won by Ogier. Then Croatia, then Portugal, which was won by Rovempera, and then Sardinia, and then now the Safari Rally. Next, it will be Rally of Estonia and other rounds. But, you know, um, uh, we, we had a little action that was coming from there that we'll bring in later on because it's the focus of our discussion today. So we might as well move on to uh, the next item that we have lined up for you in uh, today's program. And Kenya's national soccer team is called Harambe Stars. Uh, Harambe, you know, is a word that means to pull together. Uh, I can trace it down to the Hindi origin of the word itself, to pull together. And people have pulled together. But this time round, the Kenyans are feeling a little bit let down. The team did not depart on time. The reasons given were that there was lack of flights. Everybody has discounted that, including Kenya Airways, who said the flights were there. So somebody was lying about that. Now, they played two matches, one against Pakistan. I don't know the ranking of Pakistan. Right. And they lost against Mauritius. Now, this has not gone down well with the Kenyans. And, 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 and I would say this, you know, um, if you look at the ranking of Mauritius, as you asked, Bernard, uh, you know, they are ranked number 180 in the FIFA World Cup, okay? Uh, while Kenya is ranked number 78. And um, I, I, I think that is why, why it has wrapped Kenyans in the wrong way. Uh, when you have a team, you know, that is ranked number 78 being beaten and then beating uh, Pakistan. The only thing that I think we all, most of us, we know about Pakistan is cricket. You know, not, not, not really uh, uh, football. And allow me to say that Pakistan is ranked 195th in the world. Now, as to whether that is the competition that we should be facing you know, is a question. I, I, I and, deliberately and said I don't know the rankings <laughs> because I know you're going to talk, to talk about it. But the Kenyans are feeling a little bit aggrieved. Yes. That we, are the standards, is the standard of our game that low that we can lose to such teams? Or is it just that, um, you know, it, it was of no consequence? So There's something that matter. is interesting uh, that I want to point out, Bernard. Uh, if you remember when we played uh, Iran, you know, which was a very strong team. We were able to beat them. You know, something that I don't understand, especially with the Kenyan football, and, and especially for Arambe stars, when they get this team that is very strong, at least they prove us that... When they play yes, a tougher yes, opponent. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, I mean... You think they get, play better when they play a tougher opponent? Basically, you know, I mean, that is what we have been able to observe. Yeah, do you agree with I, 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 watched, I watched the game against Mauritius. It was brought, uh, beamed live. Now, one of the things I noticed is we seemed to be playing a very defensive game. Uh, Olunga, who is our striker, he had to keep going back to the midfield to get the ball. There was no feeding him with anything. Um, I'm deliberately avoiding going deep into this game because one of the complaints has been that the players, most of the players, are being played off their positions. Yes, yes. They're the, not playing uh, in their normal the, the, positions. The coach seems to be playing d d midfielders as defenders. You know, mm. even, the, even when we played uh, Mauritius, he took off um, uh, Schumer, who, who is the one who scored the goal. And instead of putting in a striker, what did he put? Put in a defender. What are you defending against Mauritius? You mm. <laughs> <laughs> should be scoring. Not. That's the opportunity to... I don't know what the strategy uh, was yeah, in that game, but no. I only know that the result has not gone well with a lot of people. No. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think, Kenan Bernard, uh, what I believe it happens here is that most of these players at the same time, you know, when they look at the team that they are playing with, you know, they may underestimate them. And that is why they are able to you know, to, we, we are able to see the performance that we see. Because if you underestimate anyone, 
regardless of uh, the position that you are in in the world, mm. definitely you know you will be able. To I'll tell you close. something: you never, you never underrate anyone who gets onto the field with you. You never underrate them. Absolutely. They have a reason to be there, and they are also playing for a win and nothing else. Yeah. But let's move on now to a, probably a happier story. You know the term Tore Bobe. It's a kissy <laughs> term that means we are the ones. We are here. <laughs> and that has been the chant the whole week because Shabana Football Club is back in the league. I don't know why there's so much celebration about it. The kissy nation is happy about it. The rest of the country is celebrating with them. Two decades they've not been in the top league. And Shabana is now back. Yes, well, Shabana. because we are talking about the league coming to an end this weekend with the last matches being played on Sunday, all the teams will be on the field at the same time, simultaneously, in different grounds. Shabana are back, and so is Moranga Seals getting right. into their first, uh, uh, their first chance into the Premier League. Yes, the first time for Moranga Seals, um, and by the way, their last match is against Shabana as well. I think that's, that's this weekend. Uh, but Shabana, the great Shabana of Mo, uh, Motego, he was called. Remember yes, Motego? Henry Motego. Yeah, anyway, so... so the, the, and the, Michael the, Koff. And Michael Koff the also. The father of, uh, uh, of, of, of Origi. Of Origi. Yes, I know. Yeah, so I, 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 see, Korea, I see, see this as a, as a great opportunity for the players around, around Kisi, around that region, to now join Shabana and showcase their talent and move on to, the, to, to bigger things. Shabana has already been proved... Well, it, may, it, may, it may not work like that. It but may it, not. It, yeah, because but uh, when you're in the Premier League, what you're looking for is uh, how to remain there and how to be at the top. So you might recruit players mm. to be able to keep you there because getting there is one thing. Now, now staying, remaining staying there, staying winning there. there. So you might not tough. want to bring people it's from tough. down there, yeah. but you might want to just, uh, mm. you know, but, but, uh, but, uh, uh, get people who are ready can, for, for the Premier can, League. Can, can you imagine, you know, what will go through your mind as players, as, um, as, as coaches, as the owners of the teams? Uh, Immediately, you know, when, when you have been out for the last 20 years, and then suddenly, <laughs> the you know, excitement you, was you great. Back. The excitement and, was and great. I can tell you, you know, I mean, uh, I, I think this thing with the counties and all that, uh, hopefully, you know, the county government will be able to, to chip in. Yes, to uh, help them a bit. Yes, to, to help them. Then at the end of the day, but, we'll and it's be a community club as well. It's just like Mormaya yes, and Seals. Yeah. Moranga Seals. And Moranga Seals as well. Yeah. I don't know if you listened to, to Gilbert Celebo, their former coach. He used to coach uh, Shabana. But he did, and, and, and I think in 2015, he got them, and then there was a wrangle. He got them promoted, but there was some wrangling between FKF and I don't know who, mm -hmm. so the promotion never took place. Nobody was promoted, nobody was relegated. Yeah. And yeah. he says, this, is, this, is, this has been coming. Okay, and and let's see what they well, can do. We just hope that they will maintain their, their they discipline, stay. not get onto the field, and just be able yeah. to be a team that can be supported. Uh, uh, Captain, just one quick yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, just, we just need to one. Go to the break. You know, I, I think what we need to to look at the country, uh, Bernard, is that uh, we can be able to support our teams. Because if you look at this country, so many Kenyans, you know, they are talking Monday through Monday, you know, they are talking about uh, the, the Premier Leagues, I mean, the, the English uh, Premier League and mm. the European Premier League, hardly today talk about their own games. And right. therefore, you know, when we have Japan and they have made it a conversation among the Kenyans, then that means football is going to the next stage. And well, then, let's leave it for now. Let's leave it at that for now. We've got to go into the break. When we come back, we'll look at the FKF Premier League and where they are, and then we'll get into our story, the main story, which is about the WRC Safari Rally and being here in Kenya. We'll talk to a rally enthusiast as well and compare you know, his enthusiasm in those days when he covered the Safari Rally and he followed the Safari Rally, and now with the new machines that are both electrical and mechanical and what the difference there is there. Plus, I'll remind you of our question as well. Who are you rooting for at the World Rally Championship Safari Rally? Who are you rooting for at Bernard underscore sports at K Chege underscore sports and at Wilfred Bungay that's where our handles are at we'll be waiting for your comments let's take a little break now